We're going to talk now about a really common condition with athletes, um, injury to the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is the largest, strongest ligament in the body, so it's this thick, broad tissue here, very, very strong, and it's the tendon uh, that connects the muscles of the calf to the heel bone. So the muscles of the calf, very strong muscles, uh, two groups in there, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, ending in, in, a, in a tendon that uh, runs from about the lower one third of the leg into the heel bone. So that when this muscle contracts, it plantar flexes the foot and it gives us that massive drive that we get during walking and running propulsion. So a very, very important muscle and tendon complex. Now I guess um, Achilles tendon injury is one of the um, the great perplexing injuries in modern sports medicine. Um, we are slowly but surely understanding more about it, but there's still a long way to go. Um, historically, we've thought that maybe this overuse injury was, um, was to do with, uh, uh, I suppose, micro tearing of the tendon, which eventually would become degenerative. We'd have areas of what's called tendinosis within the tendon. Maybe some adhering of the membrane that surrounds the tendon, it's called the peritenon. Um, and, uh, and general tethering of these structures that, that created pain. What we think now um, is that the, there are compression issues involved here. So we think that especially as the foot moves into dorsiflexion, that the tendon becomes compressed on the underlying structures. And this is maybe uh, the, uh, the issue responsible for the pathomechanics of this particular condition. We'll find out more of that as uh, time goes on. We've got some excellent researchers that are onto this right now. A lot of them uh, in Australia, Jill Cook, Craig Purdom, some of the key people who are involved in the research here. And they're doing excellent work, which helps us to understand not only how the injury occurs, but what we need to do to treat it. So when we have a look at this tendon um, in terms of examination, um, there are a couple of ways we can have a look at it. I like to have a look at it um, offload. So uh, the foot is relaxed. We can even plant a flex it a little bit if we want to, to take the tendon offload. Um, you can then carefully palpate around the tendon to uh, see what the level of pain is here, to get an idea of the location of pain um, and, uh, and just get a bit of an idea of what's going on there. In this case, as I said, the tendon is offload or off stretch. Uh, so we are also able to examine the peritenon, the membrane that surrounds the tendon. We can glide it over the tendon. We can feel for any areas of lumpiness that might indicate some degeneration within the tendon uh, and just get a general feel for the quality of this, uh, this, this unit. We can then put the tendon on, on light load. So the, the peritenon now is, is, uh, uh, is also loaded with the tendon. So it is, uh, uh, it is, it's on stretch. So it's not able to glide over the tendon uh, uh, at the same level. And in this position, we can examine the tendon proper and try to get some understanding of whether we are dealing, what structure we're dealing with, whether it's the tendon proper or whether it's the actual uh, peritenon. So I think it's quite important to have a look at that, uh, that examination, both off load and on load. Typically, what we expect to see here um, in athletes, um, the area is normally in the mid substance of the tendon. So the tendon begins about here. So uh, yeah, roughly one third the way up the leg. Um, there, the tendon of soleus uh, blends with the, uh, the main tendon here, um, becomes this thick cord here. Typically in athletes, we tend to see a mid-substance injury. So right around the, the middle of the tendon here, we start to see pain and discomfort. We can also see what's called insertional tendinopathy, which is um, right over the back of the bone. This is where the fibers of the Achilles tendon mesh into the, uh, the calcaneus or the heel bone. And what we see here is probably some micro tearing. Uh, so Sharpie's fibers that connect the, uh, the tendon into the bone perhaps become compromised. And we get this, uh, this quite exquisite pain over the, uh, the posterior tubercle, the back part of the heel bone or calcaneus. Now you understand that I'm not calling this condition Achilles tendonitis. Uh, and I'm doing that on purpose because for some time now, we've really stopped calling this condition Achilles tendonitis. The reason we do that is that Achilles tendonitis is a very specific diagnosis. So it means the tendon itself is inflamed. Um, and what we see in most cases of Achilles tendon pain does not represent inflammation. 
If it doesn't represent inflammation, we shouldn't be calling it itis because itis means inflammation. So we tend to call it Achilles tendinopathy, which is a much broader um, description of the injury, and it simply means there is pathology within the Achilles tendon complex. So I'd encourage you to think in that, in that manner. Um, it may well be Achilles tendonitis, but that means that there are inflammatory markers within the tendon, and until you've actually established that, you shouldn't be calling it that. Um, again, the importance of this is it gets back to treatment. Um, if it's not inflammation, then we wouldn't treat it with uh, inflammatory anti-inflammatory protocols. Um, in terms of how we might be uh, um, uh, looking at the, the stresses that might cause this condition, again, ranges of motion, incredibly important. Um, more distal and proximal control, very, very important in athletes, so we want to have a detailed look at the way the athlete runs we would want be wanting to have a look and see the range of motion especially at the level of the uh, of the ankle joint the talocrural joint is there excessive dorsiflexion that might perhaps be causing some compression of the uh, achilles tendon on the under, underlying structure is there some restriction dorsiflexion that might perhaps be causing some tension within the structure and that might also be causing some issues so they're the things we want to be looking at it is not sufficient for you to be looking at this in a uh, static examination. In other words, exactly what I'm doing now. For any sports condition, it's incredibly important that you take a dynamic perspective on this. So you have to have a look at the athlete walking and running. You have to get an understanding of what's going on during those uh, particular maneuvers. Uh, and you then have to titrate that back to what you're seeing with the injury. Okay, in terms of how we might be treating this, I suppose like uh, a lot of injuries, we talked about uh, plantar heel pain a while ago, and I could probably list off 10 or 12 different ways that you might be able to treat this. There are probably only two or three that have been established as being effective with uh, properly constructed randomized controlled trials. Historically, um, all sorts of different treatment protocols for this, ranging from um, things like uh, ultrasound and perhaps even TENS and some of the other uh, electrotherapies. Not a great deal of evidence for those in the literature at all. Um, I think what we're trying to do now is look at a model of stress shielding. So we're trying to understand how we might be able to take the stress off this structure, um, try to allow it to heal correctly, try to get the, uh, the collagen fibres to align correctly. One of the most promising um, treatments that's arisen over the last few years is called the, uh, the Heavy Load Eccentric Muscle Training Program. Um, very, very effective way of uh, eccentrically loading this muscle tendon complex to allow quite rapid healing of the structure. I'm going to show you how to do that in, in a little bit. Um, but the eccentric training program is really quite effective. You need to be careful how you do that. If we're dealing with insertional Achilles tendinopathy, um, the protocol for the eccentric program is completely different than it would be for mid-substance Achilles tendinopathy. So again, we'll talk about that in due course. Now, the other thing that's also very important is trying to understand any sort of uh, biomechanical component to this injury. Um, one of the things that has been strongly associated with Achilles tendon pain um, is uh, uh, a foot that perhaps pronates excessively. Now, this is quite controversial. Um, we're still trying to understand how that might, um, might meld into this injury, might influence this injury. But one of the thought processes is that as your foot pronates, because the Achilles tendon inserts more laterally than, sorry, it inserts more, uh, more medially than laterally, as you pronate, it puts those structures on increased load. So if we can try to change the position, we can unload these structures, take the stress off them, and um, maybe uh, allow the, uh, the structure to heal more rapidly. So that's where an orthotic device might come in handy. Um, we can look at either a prefab device like the bioorthotic or we can look at a, uh, a custom made orthotic. Um, I think that I'm now tending to move more towards uh, looking at a prefab style device because they're, they're simple, they're easy to use in the short term. If we get a good result with that then we can perhaps look at uh, moving more towards a custom built device down the track. Um, but it's, it's really an individual decision based on, on the individual athlete and what you're trying to, to achieve. Again, the take home message here is every tissue has uh, an optimal zone of stress, so it will, it will work within that spectrum of stress. Once you move beyond that 
a spectrum of stress and for somebody like Rosie who's a very good 400 meter runner she's overstressing structures all the time just trying to get that little fraction of a second to make her run faster so we've got to try to figure out ways to reduce the stress on the structure um, and that can be through stretching it can be through mobilization of tight structures it can be through strength it can be through correcting biomechanical uh, abnormalities as you identify them so the key take-home message here two forms of this injury insertional mid-substance. We think that compression is very, very involved in this, so we want to try to avoid anything that compresses the tendon. Um, we want to look at um, proximal and distal structures. We want to look at strength and flexibility, and we want to look at biomechanics. If we can put all those together in a package um, and we can look at changing uh, those variables, then we're in with a really good chance of getting a good result with Achilles tendinopathy.